Welcome to another edition of Community Conversations. Thank you for joining us. Today, I'm joined by Margaret Nussbaum, Special Projects Manager uh, in the County Executive's Office. Margaret is working on community needs and senior citizen um, leadership teams, and I think she'll have a lot of interesting information to share with you. Hi, Margaret, how are you? Hi, Jan, thanks for having me today. Uh, well, I thought we could start off by having you share with our viewing audience a little bit about yourself, um, not just what you've done for county government, but maybe broadly some of the things you've done in the community and how long you've lived here. Well, I'm born and raised in Frederick County, and uh, I've lived here almost all my life. I went to college out of state, but I lived here, grew, um, went to school here, and I'm even now still living in my childhood home. So. Frederick County is home to me, and my family's nearby. I have siblings that live nearby, and I've um, done a lot in the community over my year, over the time I've been here. Well, I got to know you um, as the Division Director of Citizen Services, so I know you did a lot of other things in county government in your career. You want to embellish on that a bit? Sure. When I started with Frederick County Government many moons ago, at least 30, um, I started as a part-time temporary uh, summer jobs counselor with what was then called the Job Training Agency. And as time grew on, the summer ended and I was held on to uh, begin a first, the first program that was a joint effort between JTA and the Department of Social Services. Jobs Service. Training. Jobs Training Agency at, and with the Department of Social Services. And that model we ran for 12 years. So I did that for a year and then I moved on to develop training programs. And then I also then uh, coordinated the marketing for the agency and the Private Industry Council. And then after that, I left for Howard County Government for 10 months to be an assistant director at their job training agency. And then I came back and managed Started. You discovered that was the wrong thing to do. <laughs> yeah. I liked being home more than being on the road. So when I came back, I uh, came back to be the director of family partnerships. So I started that department for the county and uh, managed that for 15 years. And then, as you said, I was promoted to the division director position. So, so I've done a lot in my years here with the county. Well, um, I'm happy to have you back and have you as part of the county executive team. And I really do look to your expertise on community needs and senior services because the Department of Aging was part of citizen services and still is for that matter. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing right now, including your work with the transition team? Absolutely. The transition team has been working hard since December. And we have interviewed all of the division directors. We've We've met with them, and, and in some cases, more of the staff in the divisions because they're so large and they encompass so much. And so we've really gotten a great understanding of county government, how it's structured, and what changes we might recommend to you as you move forward as county executive and a county council form of government. So one of the tasks for the transition team, really the primary task, is to look at that organizational structure and um, to help me present an organizational plan, which is required as part of the charter. That's right. And so um, as part of the transition, I also set up four leadership teams, which consist of 15 or so people with, uh, who bring expertise to the topic. I have education, jobs. Uh, community needs and senior citizens. And you're actually chairing two of those, community needs and uh, senior citizens. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me a little bit about how that work is progressing? Absolutely. The senior citizens team, boy, they are movers and shakers. They are ready to go. They're on target. They've identified their priority areas for you. And uh, they have a lot to say about senior citizens in Frederick County. So can you give me a few hints of what their top <laughs> priorities might be? Well, they're looking for someone to champion senior citizen services and information in the community. They want to know that there's a hub where the information sits that can go out to everyone. Okay. And we want to elevate the community's um, uh, ownership of seniors and uh, senior citizens in our community so that um, 
they don't become, or senior citizen services don't become a political football, frankly, in the future. That it's something that we value with our aging population growing. Our baby boomers are definitely moving into the elder years. We need to be certain that we've got what we need in our community for them because we want them to stay here. Well, we certainly do want them to stay here. And one of the demographic changes in Frederick County that is most significant, that is looming out there, is the uh, aging of our population. Mm -hmm. And the portion of our community that's uh, 65 and over will actually um, grow by leaps and bounds between now and um, 2020. Mm -hmm. And it, we're going to grow, that age group is going to grow twice as fast as the state of Maryland and twice as fast as the country. So we really do have to put a plan in place. And I think um, having this aging population creates advantages and opportunities, not just a need for certain services. A lot of people think about we just need to provide help to people so they can stay in their home and uh, you know, health care issues, et cetera. I think there's a great opportunity as more seniors live longer, live more active life, to take advantage of the wisdom, the job experience, and the wealth of knowledge that exists in our um, over 65 age population so that they can really help move our county forward. So Absolutely. That is one of the areas that the senior citizens leadership team will recommend is to look at um, how we can um, capitalize on the skills and the talents that we have in our community of our seniors and how we can put them to good use through volunteerism or jobs. Right. And um, they're, they're very motivated and they're, they, they really rose to the challenge that you pr gave to them. Well, I look forward to hearing more about it. How about the community needs team? The community team needs team is just as motivated um, you know, the issue of poverty in Frederick County is a big issue. And uh, I think across all the leadership teams, you probably we will be hearing about homelessness and how that impacts everyone in their education, their ability to get and keep jobs, their ability to um, put food on the table and care for their rest of their family or their friends and neighbors. So, um, poverty is a big issue. We have students in our school system who are homeless, and we have many folks that um, are very concerned about that issue. Mm -hmm. And so that has been one of our top issues. And in, and in trying to come up with ways to bring all sectors in the community together to try and address that issue. Yeah, we have a lot of um, very capable uh, human service nonprofit partners and to try to build that, and I, you know, we talk a lot about private-public partnerships, and I want to talk about nonprofit public partnerships mm -hmm. to really help address the human needs in our community. Because I think there's really a lot of passion for it, a lot of energy for it, and I think if we work together, we can make a difference in how we address this. And it is a problem not just in our community, but really across our country. Um, I recently read in the newspaper that. Um, you know, o over half of our children in our public schools nationally are on free and reduced lunch, mm -hmm. and about a little over a quarter here in Frederick County. So I think we need to grapple with that, and I think we can provide leadership, not just here at home, but maybe statewide and nationally, on how to best solve that problem by working in partnership. Absolutely. And that's, that's some of the uh, techniques or um, traits of a community that are um, encompassing all the leadership teams is the uh, partnerships between public and either private, nonprofit or private for-profit that we all can do things together mm -hmm. and we all have something to bring to the table. So you want to give our viewers a hint on a few of the specific ideas that are coming out of this uh, <laughs> a senior well, uh, leadership team? The, the seniors definitely want to champion and they definitely want us to look at other um, models of working with seniors, not just medical models, but right. other um, ways of engaging seniors and helping them live in their homes longer and um, uh, be contributing citizens for much longer than, than they may be thinking they could be. Okay. All right. Are there any other goals or, or items that you're working on that you'd like to share? 
Goodness, there's a lot going on. Um, we certainly are concerned about the heroin ish epidemic in Frederick County, so I am doing some, some research into that. There's many things going on. I'm not sure they're all uh, coordinated in a way they, that we'd like them to be, but there are many people that have a sincere interest in that area as well. Yes, I mean, one of the things we've talked about is a lot of people are appointing task force to address the heroin epidemic, and it is a problem here. Uh, we did have had a lot of fatalities. It seems to be an issue that's affecting young people in their 20s, uh, but certainly there's an education component through our school system. So really, finding out what everybody is doing from law enforcement to the health department to mm -hmm. education and to all of the human service agencies and some organic organizations that have come up around that issue mm -hmm. is really uh, something I want to put together so that we can coordinate that effort and really try to make a difference in our community. Absolutely. We need something that's going to be actionable, something that we know we're going to do and make a difference um, for our community with regards to, to the heroin epidemic. I mean, we've had 30 deaths due to heroin in, the, in 2014, and that's 30 too many. Yes. Yes, it is. Absolutely. So I know there's a lot of people who are coalescing around that. So if somebody wanted to contact you with information uh, or input for seniors, community needs, or on the heroin epidemic, how would they get a hold of you? Well, I manage the uh, county's quick link entitled Transition and Leadership Team Suggestions. So if anyone would like to provide any suggestions for any of those areas, they may do so by clicking on that and they will fill out a form and the email comes to me and then I put it where it needs to be okay. so it can be addressed. And they can also call me at 301-600-7700. Well, thank you very much, Margaret. I'm very excited to have you be part of the team. Lots of important issues that you're working on from seniors to homelessness to the heroin epidemic. So I thank you for all you're doing and for all you will be doing. And um, I appreciate you being on the show today so that more people uh, can get to know you and to know what you're working on. Thank you, Dan. It was great to be here. Thank you for joining us for another edition of Community Conversations. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the work that's being done on community needs, seniors, and the heroin epidemic. If you'd like to contact me or contact Margaret with your suggestions and ideas in these areas, we really look forward to hearing from you. One of my priorities has been engaging the public, and I've been really thrilled by the interest and participation on all of these leadership teams in these topic areas. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next week. <music>